Cao Cao managed to defeat Lu Bu at Shu Province. With that battle behind him, he moved toward a massive confrontation with his old friend, Yuan Shao. First, he lent some troops to Liu Bei and gave him orders to eliminate Yuan Zhu. Cao Cao figured that Liu Bei would relish the opportunity to face such a powerful opponent. And just as he expected, Liu Bei immediately set out for battle. Indeed, Cao Cao would use anybody at his disposal in order to further his ambitions, even the emperor himself. However, his actions began to lead to unrest within the imperial court. And so, the emperor issued a decree that Cao Cao was to be assassinated. Cao Cao, you mean to kill me? I would never presume to do so, your highness. I tried to have you killed. I would have no right to complain. <laughs> you are a wise man, your highness. If it is your wish to kill me, I will not stop you. You frighten me. You shed no tears for your allies. You side with the enemy if necessary. And when someone is not needed, you get rid of them. Even if it is me. A country needs its people. And without a ruler, the people are lost. Your Highness is needed. At least, while I am alive, that is. Your presence allows me to move freely. To walk upon my ordained path to build a new and better land. As ordered, Liu Bei attacked the Yuan Shu army and emerged victorious. In his weakened state, Yuan Shu was no longer a match for Cao Cao and passed away shortly thereafter. It was then that suddenly Liu Bei rose in rebellion. Cao Cao was determined to bring his massive army down upon Liu Bei's forces, leaving none unpunished. Liu Bei was a mere nuisance whose blind devotion to the concept of virtue would only lead to more chaos. Liu Bei's army crumbled before the might of Cao Cao's ambition. Once again, Liu Bei was forced to wander the land with no place to call his own. As a result of this fierce battle, Cao Cao welcomed a new general into his ranks. It was none other than Guan Yu, a warrior who combined honor, loyalty, bravery, and intelligence into one formidable package. Having coveted Guan Yu for a long time, Cao Cao was pleased to finally have him by his side. Finally, he was ready to face his old friend Yuan Shao. Having made the necessary preparations, he advanced his army toward Guangdu, the site where all would be decided. Cao Cao and Yuan Shao, their battle for control of the land was about to begin. It is clear what strategy we must.
must use. Place decoys at Bai Ma and Yanjin. Then launch attacks from each unit. He has numbers. But Yuan Shao is indecisive and imperceptive. He is a man of the past. This should be enough to deal with him. However, the problem is those decoys, though. The enemy is so great in number that they'll be simply overrun. Exactly. <laughs> You're a smart man. I can see why our Lord values you so. Forgive me. It was not my place to speak out. Then you will have to go yourself, Father. Hmm. So I would be the decoy. <laughs> Quite brilliant, Lord Zaubi. Your father must be proud. Lord Cao Cao is the perfect bait. We can lure out the enemy at both Bai Ma and Yanjin. As he makes his advance up the middle, we'll strike both places at the same time. Then we can squeeze the enemy in the center between us. I see. You look to divide and isolate the enemy forces. Precisely. Our lord and I will attack from Yanjin. Master Guan Yu, you take Bai Ma. Understood. Very well. Jia Xu, show me the intellect you are famous for. <laughs> 